Hey guys, your second favorite PE teacher, Denver, and there's a huge problem in the Fortnite pro community right now, and it's not anything you might think. It's not a new item that pros are upset about. It's not even another new bug or glitch Epic accidentally added in the game. The World Cup is bringing a lot of excitement, and it's making dreams come true for some of our favorite pros who qualified and are heading to New York City for a chance to change their entire lives with millions of dollars on the line. But in all the joy, the happiness, and the celebrations for some, many pros who gave their life over the last year are left in sorrow and sadness. And we're not just talking about disappointment either, unfortunately, even though, of course, there is disappointment involved. We are talking about a deep hopelessness, depression as a result of all the hard work and stress that these guys and some of them just kids have gone through to succeed and some of them are left in tears their words not mine and it's understandable but let's take a look at the deeper side of competitive fortnite and show what it's like for anybody who doesn't know just how difficult it is on your mental health click like and subscribe right now and all names are blurred in this so we can just see the feelings and the sentiments and the struggles from these pros and what it's like to be a pro player in the biggest prize pool competition gaming has ever seen plus a huge interview at the end with the pro players we have a deep talk on his struggles and what he feels after being so close and not qualifying himself and it's a really good interview don't miss it now this first message is from a player who was less than five spots off from qualifying several times and so close to fifty thousand dollars in a trip to new york and this is what he said after not making it embarrassed a year for nothing. I can't stop crying right now. I know I'm good enough. Not going to solo worlds because I lost three tiebreakers. Good chance I'm not going for duos. Had to stay alive for 20 seconds and we qualified for duo. I could be double qualified by Twitter for a bit. Again, this player missed it by a hair and just think working hours and hours a day, losing time with family and friends. And when I say working, I mean working. For anybody unfamiliar, this level of gaming is way more than fun. Some of these guys aren't even having fun anymore, whether that be Epic's fault or not. It's a job, but the pay is way different than a regular job. Big streamers can make tons of money, as you guys know, and someone like Tifu, who's dominant at the game, Plus, he has a huge following that takes a lot of the stress off. If he's not able to qualify, he still has a ton of fans and can make a living doing his job of streaming Fortnite. Now, some of these super talented players, though, they don't have a following built up yet and don't have a good way to support themselves financially outside of this one thing. Another extremely talented pro player left a terrible message about how hard it is in his life right now and the effect competitive Fortnite has had on him, saying, I'm done with competitive Fortnite, probably with Fortnite in general. The game has single-handedly destroyed my mental health. The things that run through my head are not okay. I don't know what's wrong with me, but a video game should not be doing this to me. The constant pressure and stress to perform is too much for me. Maybe I'm not a competitor. I can't take it. If this means I'm going to be dropped from my org, then so be it. I'm sorry. And the stress of the organization a lot of these players are a part of, like FaZe or 100T, to name two big ones, is a huge factor. And to know they are held accountable to the org that is paying them however much money to be successful, they were brought on for one reason, to have success, to further the brand. And that pressure to perform, not just for yourself, but an entire org that is paying you solely to do well, I, I just can't imagine the stress. Me making good videos for you guys is enough pressure for me. And I'm not under contract with any one of you and specifically chosen by you for me to succeed and do well. Just the fear of getting kicked off your org would be pretty intense in terms of feelings of, of shame and, and guilt and depression and sadness. And as we saw, embarrassment. He continues saying, I started doing this a year and a half ago and still am nowhere where I feel I deserve to be. I've worked so hard with both my stream and the game and it's not enough. I'm 20 years old. Listen to this. I make 10 to $15 a day for streaming eight plus hours a day while not enjoying it a single bit because of the game I play. I don't know why nothing ever goes in my favor. Some people say it's my mindset, but that isn't it. Everything I do is cursed. Nothing goes my way. No matter what I do, my mental is thoroughly messed up up right now. Anyone who knows me personally, which are very, very few people, understand how unfortunate everything is for me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe after a day or two of relaxing, I'll change my mind. But right now I can't take it. I'm sorry to let everyone down. I'm a flop. And I want to tell this player right now on behalf of all of us, you are not a flop. You reached a point in competitive gaming that few people will ever reach. Epic already said they're doing more tournaments and you still have a lot of opportunities to prove yourself. These players just go through so much and I hope the feelings they have right now are just temporary. Sometimes a break from anything that brings us a lot of stress is what we need to come back and face it better than before. 
I reached out to a player who's going through this right now and looking forward positively to week 10 duos where he has his last chance to qualify for New York City and he is a part of the successful organization known as SOAR and his name is JT. I learned a ton in this interview, things that I thought I knew, but just hearing it from JT himself just definitely opened my eyes up. Check it out. Uh, I've been playing the game since it came out back in October 2017. So yeah, it's been at least 40 hours to 50 hours every single week since then. Like, I've been grinding the leaderboard since like season one and I've just fell in love with the game since the start and love playing it. And then once competitive came out, you know, like once scrimming became a thing, I found a passion that I, I never found, I, that I never knew I even had before. Honestly, I've, I've been in before. I was in the Winter Royale back last year in December, and I had like 90,000 people watching me. At the point, I had the sword. And when I had the sword, I tell you, I literally just went to the middle of zone, turtled up, and I just literally, I was shaking so hard. Like, I was so nervous. I couldn't focus on the game. I literally just, I stopped. I wasn't focusing on the game, and I literally just like, you know, meditating, how you just relax, you try to breathe in, breathe out. You know, just take a little moment to relax, take a deep breath and just relax and it'll, it'll really go a long way. That, it was literally for like about five minutes. I just, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't even shooting at anybody. I was just breathing in and out, breathing in and out, trying to relax the nerves. Um, I do set a time for family and friends, like every now and then, every month or every two months, I end up going to Pennsylvania to visit some family. And I do enjoy family time, but for me right now, this is my main focus. I'm just trying to give it a my all. Uh, my, mainly my mom pressures me another direction. She still wants me to finish my school because I've done two years of college and she wants me to finish it, finish it up and get my four year degree. Yeah, I've I've done help desk support. Oh, I can't speak. Help desk support before, and I actually enjoy that. I was thinking of getting into a computer science degree and, and getting into IT. That's kind of like the field that I was going into. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, before the World Cup, before these open tournaments became a thing, it wasn't. It honestly wasn't. I was putting way too much time into it and not getting much return from it. But now that Fortnite announced the weekly million dollar tournaments throughout the end of the year, and it pretty much it gives every every single competitor player a chance to compete or make money. And it's basically every single week we're actually making money from these tournaments. As long as you keep qualifying and you're consistent and you're actually putting in the time, you're for sure making some money out of it. Honestly, I feel like for the most part, they are doing a good job but there are some things that they just really need to listen to the community about. It's either that or, you know, just give us like separate loop pools compared to casuals, like competitive style gets different, like different loop pools. And cause right now you see the new item that they added the storm item, like they had to remove it for week nine just to give us some time to adapt because that item literally changes the complete meta. Yeah, it's kind of like what they did at TwitchCon. Back at TwitchCon, the zombies were out and they like people assumed that they were actually about to play with, with zombies out and like literally the day before TwitchCon, zombies came out and all, all, like every single thing changed about the game. Like the meta was just changed completely. So like, I'm so glad that like at least they listen to us to a certain extent and actually give us time to adapt to things to like new meta changing items. Um, honestly, just take your time with it. Just understand that even though you go through a lot of stress, life is hard and it isn't meant to be easy. And just understand that there will be things that are like out of your reach and it's hard to control but you just have to give it time eventually 
like if you're experiencing some kind of pain or if you're feeling experiencing sadness from the stress just know that any pain is temporary and eventually it'll subside you know so just give it time like honestly just go through it it'll make it'll only make you stronger in the end like if, as if life yeah like as if life like if you ever lived out on your own being independent you know paying rent having bills going through debt getting credit card debt you don't get like like it changes you and it matures you but in the end you become stronger and you become and like you learn how to handle it a lot better so just just understand that you may be in a rough spot but a few months from now you won't be and you will be become a more mature person all the time all the time what they fail to realize is all of the things that happen behind it like countless hours of odd reviewing countless hours of watching other players and learning new metas you know countless countless hours of practicing you know making sure your mechanics are on point and even for content creators there's so much that goes behind the scenes that people just don't see people think like oh look at this video He's, he just makes videos on youtube or whatever but they fail to realize all the countless hours of editing that goes behind it the main one is pod reviewing so if you like want to get into competitive and you want to learn from pros the best way to learn from pros is to watch them play you literally just have to go through vod is like a twitch video or like an old broadcast that people stream and you literally just got got to go through their vods you have to study how they play there's actually youtube videos like if you've seen the benji fishy one of how he qualified for the world cup and a lot of pros have seen that video uh second one is make sure your mechanics are on point like you have to give it a lot of time of practice so that means countless hours on creative making sure your edits are quick enough making sure that you're able to build properly and you know not harry potter which is a term for going under your ramp <laughs> the last thing is experience if you really want to be the best you have to practice and play like the best so that means countless hours of playing scrims playing games you know experiencing the end game and just popping off end game honestly just yeah the more you do it the better you're gonna get at it exactly Thank you so much, Denver. This is actually like my first interview, man. So it's, it feels good. It feels good. <laughs>